Llegando a Boston teníamos todo organizado para conocer un poco la ciudad y luego ya enfocarnos a las siguientes juntas. Uno tenía la oportunidad de conocer la ciudad desde otro punto de vista y por qué no tomar unas fotitos para el recuerdo. Well, welcome, and let my colleague Allison. Excuse me, hi, I'm Allison Bailey. I'm a senior partner with BCG here in our Boston office. I lead our U.S. education practice, and I am also a BCG fellow on the topic of digital education. And I've published a number of publications which we will provide to you electronically following this if there's interest. By the way, I can I can make this available in a PDF if you want to distribute it after the fact. So you don't have to worry about taking notes, uh, at least for the slides. So I'm with Information Services and Technology at Boston University, and I head up what, what the division is called uh, uh, Educational Technology Training and Outreach. So there's some variability, but I will tell you that from an experiential perspective, the people who are watching it, for the most part, they enter in the same way. They see the same screens, you know, the, the same environment. It's fairly consistent. Hi, Matt, to me. I'm Dominic Sprinchy. I am um, uh, involved with teaching and learning for Boston University, and that's my responsibility. Digital learning is really um, about thinking about innovative technological ways to, to, uh, to invigorate the curriculum with new technologies and be able to um, uh, motivate and uh, enable students to learn, uh, both uh, synchronously and asynchronously, uh, and also to try to use technologies to adapt to uh, learning styles, individual learning styles, that gives them more options and how they would like to digest the information they need to have access to. And why should we, uh, why should we um, uh, move towards digital technologies because at least at Boston University um, our students that are applying to the school are digital natives they're growing up in the digital uh, environment in their K through 12 education and we have to be prepared and ready for them so it's a it's a we have to put a lot of emphasis on making sure that we are meeting their uh, expectations when it comes to their experience in, in at Boston University at least from a technological perspective Una de las actividades que me gustó en Boston fue hacer voluntariado, ya que una organización que recibe donativos de ropa, juguetes y otras, otros artículos, los teníamos que organizar, eh, los de mejor calidad, obviamente, para así ser regalados a personas que lo necesitaran, tanto niños o adultos. En Boston se estuvo discutiendo acerca del contenido gratuito en Internet, es decir, el prestigio que tiene se considera de baja calidad ya que es gratuito comparado con el que se paga. Este fue uno de los grandes puntos. Otra información que recibí es acerca de la infraestructura que debe tener una escuela para impartir eh, pues, todo el contenido de manera digital. Es muy costoso, entonces, ¿cómo se va a llevar? Hay otras iniciativas donde puedes utilizar ciertos... Eh, dispositivos muy económicos y puedes trabajar de manera local en las instituciones que pues tal vez no tengan mucha infraestructura también acerca de hacia dónde va la educación digital en cuanto a las tendencias por lo general por lo menos en Estados Unidos los, nos han estado diciendo que eh, de antes de la universidad toda la educación antes de la universidad es muy varía mucho según el estado entonces es muy complejo 
todavía a estandarizarla, aunque se está trabajando. Entonces la educación digital principalmente se enfoca a la parte de universidad, ya que es algo más controlado. Y también la parte del recurso, de dónde se va a obtener, si se abre toda la educación, de dónde se va a obtener el recurso. Bueno, es una respuesta que ni aquí todavía se resuelve y creo que ni a nivel mundial. Entonces, estos son algunos de los puntos que se han estado trabajando aquí en Boston. Bueno, aquí entrando, muchas hojas, arbolitos bonitos y muy verde. Bueno, vamos a entrar. Welcome to MIT. Uh, I, I'm, my name is Cecilia de Oliveira. I've been here at MIT off and on since I was a student many years ago. Uh, most recently, uh, I've been here since the Open Courseware Project started uh, back in 2002. The basic idea of Open Courseware, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, was very simple. And that was, and this was something that was thought of in the year 2000, and we actually launched it on the internet in 2002, the basic idea was just to take the teaching materials directly from MIT classrooms, whether they are uh, syllabus, assignments, readings, any of those kinds of things, problems, homework, and post those on the internet and make them freely available. And the, our reason for doing that was basically to help other educators. We, we really thought it would be a way of advancing learning around the world by giving educators a library of things that show how MIT teaches. MIT is a very special place, and a, a lot of our curriculum is pretty advanced stuff. So, what, and we're not plan, we weren't planning to develop courses that just that wouldn't be suitable here. So we're talking about putting MIT courses online. There's a certain segment of people who are going to be able to make use of those. Not not everybody, uh, and so that's what we, uh, that's what this sort of academically talented learners needs. When I was here, I would go into a big room with 500 other people and we would, you know, listen to a faculty member preach about physics. Uh, and then a couple times a week we'd have the opportunity to meet with a graduate student uh, in smaller groups. But that was it. About 10 years ago, they transformed it. And this is what freshman physics looks like now. Mm -hmm. And so the pedagogy has changed, the physical space has changed, the use of technology has enabled all of this. And what students do in a TL setting, they never have a lecture. They come in, they work in a, in a cir circle. Uh, they're expected to have done some online stuff before they come in. So it's a, little, it's a little bit of a flipped classroom, although very sophisticated. When they come into class, they're working on problems and they're working with actual experimental apparatus. So in the middle of these tables, they don't just have laptops, they actually have equipment that they're working with. And the, the instructors and TAs are wandering around. There's a lot of dialogue. Students are working together on things. This is the model of where we would like to take all of our freshman classes, all of those big classes. Get them much. You have here is or, all your hype and your early adopters and you know, people who always want to try something new. And then here is where they call the trough of disillusionment. You know, people figure out, wow, this is really hard. And I think we're actually there right now here at MIT because we've done enough of this stuff that word has gotten out about how much faculty effort is required, and it's not trivial. On, on open courseware, faculty spend five hours. That's it. They give us the material. We do everything. Oh, really? <laughs> and they would be together forever, and then the girls would walk back to Radcliffe College, which is a little bit that direction. I always laugh at that legend. Um, because I wonder why the Titanic. So she, he did not survive the Titanic. Mrs. Widener did survive, and she donated 
about half of her state. Um, she donated about two million to the college for the building of this memorial library. <coughs> now, the library itself has two major stipulations with its building. So she. Uh, my name is Michael Patrick Rudder. I'm the communications director for Harpex, and I work on behalf of the Vice Provost for Advances in Learning, which covers sort of not just online learning, but innovative learning more broadly across the university. Mm -hmm. um, so I think our goal here today is to just give you a little bit of an overview of Harvard X, um, what we do, kind of how we play in this space. Uh, you walked through our, um, our main office, which is downstairs. Uh, I think it's going to be Oh, okay. But you don't need it. It's just music. 